if we go in the GitHub repository. So one thing that is recommended and very important to use when you are uh, writing and using uh, GitHub is uh, to also use a proper versioning scheme. So in GitHub, you can use what is called tags to associate specific tags to uh, specific commits. These tags can be used for many different purposes. In this example, I have only used tags for the purpose of assigning a version number to a particular commit. So here we can see all of my tags that have been used are actually version numbers. I have decided to use a three digit version number for each commit that I consider to be relevant. The use of three-digit version numbering is uh, known as semantic versioning, where the first version number, in this case the zero, corresponds to a major release, the second two to a minor release, and the third one zero to a patch release. So whenever you do just small bug fixes, you just upgrade the third component of your version. If you want to do small additions but no real major changes in functionality, you will upgrade the minor component and the, the major component, the first one, will be upgraded if there is a major new functionality change that is potentially backward incompatibility and might introduce uh, breaking changes in other projects that might depend on your own project. In this case, since it's still work in progress, I consider my project to be under development. It's an immature project with lots of new functionality to be added. I still have a major version zero because we are still in an initial development phase. So these are just tags that are associated to commits. I can actually associate this to real releases. So in GitHub we also have the notion of a release. So I could draft a new release on the basis of the latest commit I'm having. To do this, so my latest current release was 0.2.0. .0. So let me just create a new one called 0.2.0 .0, and I will make it an alpha release. I will say it's a pre-release because I consider it's not yet production ready. I'm just doing this because there is still some pending pull requests. And then I'm going to publish the release. Okay, I just realized that I made a mistake because I wanted to call 0.2.1 instead of 0.2.0. .0. So I'm just going to edit this and change it into 0.2.1 and publish this oops, as a pre-release. And then now, okay, of course I see I have two different tags as to the same commit. Okay, and then now I, I, I see all my releases. The latest one is 0.2.1. And I can also see all previous releases. Basically for every new release, there will be a zip file that will be generated containing the entire source code of the repository. If people don't want to use GitHub directly for creating a local clone, they can just download the source code in a zip format, which is perhaps more appropriate for people that just want to install the code rather than having to clone from GitHub. So what else do we have? Well, uh, we have the notion of issues and pull requests. Issues and pull requests are a way to facilitate collaboration across many different persons on the project. So here, for example, whenever you a, a user is facing a problem with a project or whenever someone wants to provide or, or ask for new functionality to be added to the project, then we can file an issue report. And the issue could be uh, any uh, new thing. So here, for example, what we can see is there is 13 open uh, issues that I've manually added myself. One is a bug that uh, basically is a functionality that needs to be changed because otherwise something is not running correctly. Uh, essentially, in the code, I didn't check for uh, dividing an integer number by a zero number. So I might have integer division by zero errors that come up when I try to run my code. The bug doesn't manifest itself currently in compiling the code and in unit testing the code, but it can be the case. It's, uh, I think I have uh, in the description provided uh, the problem. Uh, for example, if I would create two numbers, one with value eight and one with value zero, and I would provide them as parameter to uh, the class, a class that corresponds to the division operation. And then I would compute the result for the division operation, then it would lead to an arithmetic uh, exception by z uh, division by zero error while running the code. Every issue 
can be added by someone. This is not necessarily someone that is an owner of the, pro pro of the project, of the repository. It can be anyone that files issues. We can add labels to the issue. So in this case, it's always a very good recommendation to add a label to whatever issue you have. So this could be that, okay, we found a bug or we have um, an enhancement, a new feature, new functionality that needs to be implemented. Uh, it might be that multiple people are filing the same feature uh, feature request. So then we can say, actually, this issue has already been mentioned by someone else. So then we can just tag this uh, issue report as being duplicate. Maybe someone wants to improve the documentation in the readme file, for example. Then it could be a request for added documentation. So there is a fixed set of labels that we can use. For example, we want to have more unit testing, then we could say tests needed. Even possible to edit these labels if you see other types of things that you would like to highlight. Once you want to assign a bug to a particular person, you can actually do this with assignees. For example, for the moment, I'm the only one that is involved in this project, so I can only assign this issue to myself. If there will be multiple people involved, I could uh, select from all of these people to say, you should fix this particular bug. Uh, so this is also e easy or important to be able to do what is called bug triaging, assigning particular bugs to particular persons to fix them. Uh, if we have a particular uh, issue that has been fixed, for example, we have a bug, we have a fix of this bug, uh, and we have done this through a pull request, then we could link uh, this bug issue to a pull request to say that, that is, this is the pull request that has fixed the issue. So this is also important so that we can keep trace of which issues has been, have been fixed by which pull request. An example of uh, a request for additional features is, for example, we have a calculator but we don't have a graphical user interface, so it could be useful as additional functionality to add such a graphical user interface. So this is a request for enhancement. That's why I have labeled this as enhancement. So most of the issues now are just requests for adding new functionality because this is uh, really still a project in development. So we still need to add lots and lots of functionality. Now we'll go to the next thing. Pull requests are a way for GitHub to allow people that, not, that do not have direct commit access to the project to still contribute to the project. So suppose in an open source project, you are an outsider, you are not a member of the project, but you still would like to contribute some code to the project. You cannot clone the project and do a commit because the Git repository will not allow it if you don't have commit access. So the only way to do this is by filing a pull request. So from uh, the GitHub uh, repository, you can do a new pull request in which you can add changes that you would like the members of the project to integrate. If the project members receive a pull request, then they can decide whether they want to integrate this or not. And during this, they can also communicate with the person that proposed the pull request to, uh, to see if further changes are needed. So in this case, you only see one open pull request here. We also see three closed pull requests. Let me first show the closed ones. So here, for example, my colleague Gauvin has proposed two pull requests for uh, making some changes in the repository. And uh, we see that the, these pull requests have been closed, they have been accepted and I have merged the changes. So I have accepted these changes. Uh, so he proposed something and I have accepted this uh, change. And like this, the changes were integrated in the project. Uh, for the open, the only remaining open one, uh, I just made some changes to the read, readme file. Um, I did this from within the GitHub repository user interface. Uh, basically just removing one line in the readme file. I can actually show the, the change that I proposed. If you look at the readme file, we see here there is some batch with question marks. So it's a non-working batch that I just proposed to remove. Uh, and we can see here in the pull request, this is the proposal to remove this batch from the readme file. After having sent the pull request, there are some checks being done. So as always, an automatic check whether the proposed change allows you still to run the Maven build on the repository. This was successful. There's also a code static analysis that has been run on the 
project which was successful and then there is here some check that was not successful which is the DCO. Uh, DCO is basically something that allows you to check uh, that uh, the person that did the commit has successfully signed off the commit with his name. I will just set this to pass and then I'm going back to the pull request. Now we see all checks have passed and now I can say okay we have done some checks automatically on the pull request. Uh, everything has passed. I, I agree with the change proposed in the pull request. So since I have commit, commit access I can actually merge the pull request. After merging the pull request uh, I can just change the name of the commit if I want. Change to readme file. I confirm the merge and now the pull request has been removed, it's closed. This is the latest pull request that has been closed. And in the code, we see again that 19 seconds ago someone has been committed, committing something. In the meanwhile, I also see something strange, which is now that in better code I have only 7 out of 10 in terms of quality. <laughs> So apparently now the tool says there is a problem with code duplication. Four different files, divide, times, minus and plus, there is some code that is very similar. Uh, so here we can see it's code, this part of the code is considered as being very similar in four different files. So actually the code is part of three different methods, the constructor method, uh, here the operation and here there's just some comments. So this doesn't really seem to be a big problem to me, especially because I don't think the code is identical, because this particular symbol here and here, it will be different in, uh, in, the, in each class. So if I compare, for example, the minus class and the plus class, uh, here we see a plus statement being used, while here we see the minus statement. So the code is different. And then the third one, about writing clean code, it also shows me a problem. Uh, there is some to-do method here, uh, which shows that I have prepared some method that I still didn't implement. So it's a to-do that simply says, okay, we have some code that still needs to be written. So that's indeed a known uh, issue that still needs to be added here uh, for every class for which an equals method has been implemented. I also need to implement the hash code methods, but I haven't done this.